Good morning, it's Tuesday morning. Uh, just sorting out jobs for today. So first of all, I'm going to get my uh, heat treating oven going. Well, heat treating temporary oven. Blades are already in. I just need to put them onto my final um, cycle. So basically, press enter, wait for the click. There we go. That's that one done. Uh, I got my. I got one of the blades in for in the oil yesterday. Actually, let's take this out into a bit of light so you can see it. Put it on the bench. Uh, so it's just in so a jar of uh, Danish oil is what I do. And that's a walnut. Comes out quite nice. I do like the walnut. Uh, I put brass pins with it, works really well. Just some black liners with it. So what I'll do is I'll just dry that off and then that's ready to polish up. So I'll just keep that to one side for the time being. Then the next job for this morning is this knife, which is this one. So this is the ebony one. Um, it still needs the last bit of sanding doing. It's actually quite smooth. It's a lovely handle. It's a solid, <laughs> it's definitely a solid wood to work with. So I just need to go through now. I'm just gonna do 320 grit round the edges just to get rid of any dirty marks then go for 600 all over 800 then 1200 and then that's really for a polish up before i do i've got to make a kydex sheath for it so i'll crack on first with this sanding now stupidly i realized that um i haven't got the kydex that i wanted to use to make that sheath out with so i'm not going to do it just yet so i've just banged an order in for that uh, I've got some laser engraving going on for a knife that's getting picked up on Friday and I've got my heat treating oven ticking away in the background so that's why there's a bit of noise. Uh, but I might as well cut out a couple of sheaths. Right, that's a laser engraver switched off so it's not whirring away in the background. Uh, I've got a couple of sheaths to cut out uh, and make so I might as well get, sh and get on with those and show you how I, I do it in the old fashioned way. Uh, I have got... I got this made, basically it's a, a leather cutting um, die I suppose uh, for my row stalkers and uh, row catcher blades which are a similar sort of size, different handle on them but they both fit in the same sheath. Uh, got this made but I need a press to be able to use it and that's the one thing I don't have so I've got one ordered and hopefully that'll come, well next week or two uh, they're supposed to be um, coming into the country and then I've got to pay for like the 50% that I owe for it uh, and then I can get it um, sent over so at the minute this is all is to one side um, I'm actually if it works all right I've got an idea for doing quite a few of the a few of the leather bits that I that I'll, I need to cut out like multiples off and it seems to have to doing it all by hand so I'm going to get some more of them I'm definitely going to get one for made for each sheet it's, if it's a works all right which I'm, I'm guessing it will do so basically i'll show you like i said how i do it the old school fashion um so if i'll just change the angle of the camera right i've got a very simple template so this is just a cardboard cut out one uh, i have got from all my other knife sheets i've, I've cut out a piece of plywood uh, thin ply to the shape of the sheet that i want it but this one's just as a as a basic cardboard cutout, which you can do for any sort of knife that you want to make. Um, it's very simple to do. So all I'm going to do is trace around my template. I put a mark in the centre at the top at bottom, and I'm going to put a line onto that. I'll show you in a second. Just get around everything. I'm going to make a couple. I'm marking them on the suede side of the leather rather than the outer side while the if I just once I've got this done. Yeah, it's gone all the way around. I can just grab my cutter again. There we go. Right way round. If you notice it's the opposite way round. Uh, reason is so I can cut it on the outside of the leather. So I'll cut it on that side. So if, if I do find any imperfections, I can work around it place the leather on, stamp it down, cut it out. So if there's any, there's not really anything bad on this one. Sometimes you get little cuts, little nicks, because it's um, obviously it's a natural material. 
and whatever the leather's come off might have been battling beforehand. Anyway, I always cut out this side to start with. Just go rule it, mark my centre line, and I'll use a, a gouging tool just to basically to cut this top bit and the two, two bottom sections, but go in there, and then I'll just cut a second one out as well. Right, so I've got all the bottom edge cut. Uh, I now need to make sure that I've got the rounded corners for each of the belt loops. Uh, with that, just get me some scrap of leather. I've got a one inch uh, rounded um, cutter. All I'll do is put that on the inside edge. The old mallet. I'll do the same with the top section. Invention to a small solid bit. Yeah. And then, just with this section here, because my template might alter over time, because it's only a bit of cardboard, I'll just use the uh, cutter to space it out because I know that's then it's going to be this right with the top section so I can put the end of the blade in with that I think pass that through then I can go along the top edge opposite side get the straight edge again match up the two lines and then just draw it down and there we go, that's one knife sheath cut out. I'll just get this other one finished off and then I'll show you the next part of the process. So that's both sheaths cut out now. Right, I'm going to start with putting the holes in for the belt loops. For that I need my uh, four, pronged, from four pronged punch. I'll just use my angle iron. Angle iron, set square. Just line it up, reasonably in centre. I'll just give it a light tap. Go along, that's where the upper hole needs to be. Slightly out there. Oh no. Get it. And just line everything back up. That's the top one sorted. Now line it up for the bottom. This is where that centre line also comes in helpful. So I'll put a bit of a line there. Find a main line on my board. Just line it with the top. And then I can fold it over. Now I don't put it straight. And I don't put it parallel with that side. I want it somewhere in between. So as the, knife, as the leather wraps around the knife, it sort of puts it into the right sort of location. So I want to be there, there be about there right just use a, an all to put the holes in or line up the holes for the opposite side pricking iron again that's holes in top and bottom for that part of the sheath uh, next job is to line up this edge but I need me ruler so the width of the bendy ruler is just about right going along this bottom or oh, going along the inside edge so where the welt's going to be there we go now something I did put in if I just put my template over the top I've got a hole just here put that in and basically that goes across so the bottom of the welt isn't doesn't taper all the way down to the center where the bottom of the blade is. Sorry, it doesn't taper all the way down to the bottom of the sheath. There's a flat section here, which the end of the tip sits against. Uh, it wants to be about that sort of size. 
now I've got that on, I can use my the uh, gouging tool. I don't know what it's called, actually. I'll call it a gouging tool. I'll just make sure it's in the right position on the inside. Yeah, happy with that. I'll line it up again for the centre line. I use one centimetre in, line it up by eye, and then just draw it round. So this is where the stitching is going to be. Uh, I've seen some, somebody suggested that they don't like this because it's cutting into leather, but basically it makes the stitching on the ins flush on the inside. I don't do it on the back, I just do it on the front section. So, back to my pricking iron. This is where I can use a slightly larger one. And I always start from the top. I used to start from that point there, but I can work around that. But I'd end up with a top stop top stitching hole in the wrong place. So now I know that it's going to be there and I'll just work my way through. So that's all the stitching holes around the outer edge. Stitching is holding for that. Uh, I need to then go along the centre edge. Better. Right, top section, one gouge, and then the bottom section which is basically from the where the shape of the sheath goes in I put two lines in so one either side of my center line or as best as I can make it and the reason I do that is it allows the, sh the leather to bend in this section and because this is a section that's on the blade it needs it's a little bit more of a tighter bend so therefore you've got a groove either side of it to help it close around. Uh, only comes apparent when you're wet for a minute really. But I just need to go around these top edges. Skyving tool. There we go. Both sheaths are cut out. I've just dampened them down uh, just to get the um, top layer. I ain't soaked them all the way through just to tamp, basically made the surface damp. Got my logo. I always line it up on the back of the sheath just underneath where the belt loop is positioned about right on the press Put it punch down there we go that's the logo on. they're done I just need to put the well next job is to dye these uh, help it along I'll just put it in my warming cabinet uh, sometimes don't like them to dry too quick but it doesn't matter when it's the basically at this stage, uh, get that dried, then I can dye them. Uh, it just helps us pushing it along. So into the box. Pass them in. Uh, next job would be, um, I've got a mulgrave to grind the bevel on, so I'm gonna start with that uh, while I'm waiting for these other ones to uh, temper. Uh, so my last tape, temper cycle's just finished. Uh, this is the mulgrave. Uh, it's already been heat treated. Uh, it's stamped a logo in. Uh, as you can see, I might be able to, uh, I've already started a grind on this uh, before I heat treated it because uh, I was going to put it as possibly as a Scandi grind but I'm going to actually do it as a, a, well, a flat to save a grind so it's just underneath where the logo is. Uh, I've got my grinder set up, I've got a radius platen which is the equivalent to a 52 inch belt. Uh, I've also got rigged up with a um, Mr added to it so there we go uh, it helps keep the blade cool while you're grinding it because worry is overheating the blade and grinding it uh, especially if you've got some part worn belts uh, you can overheat them quite easily and as soon as you do that the blade or the temper on the blades knackered and you've got to go through a heat, heat treating process again which isn't ideal uh, this one's got a little bit of jimping along the top of it and uh, it's going to be have those walnut scales with the uh, orange G10 liners. So what I'll do is I'll just get me get my gear on and I'll just get cracking um, grinding these down. There we go. That's the uh, blade all ground. Now I'm going to move on to hand sanding it. Uh, I've already taken it down basically through. Uh, 36 grit, 
then moved to 60, then moved to 120, 24, and then I finished it off with a A45 Trizac belt, which is equivalent to about a four, 400 grit. But now I'm gonna put it onto the, um, basically those sanding sticks, uh, EDM stones, that's it. But I'm gonna do a 320 EDM stone just to basically, because it's finer than, I find it's finer than what I'm gonna use with the, um, uh, with the belt grinder. Uh, and then I'll move on to doing um, basically just to general hand sanding with some aluminium oxide and then silicon carbide paper. That's the handles sorted. I've um, sanded the fronts down and polished them. So these are, are uh, one up burl handles quite a nice pattern on them there was a few cracks but I've luckily where I've put the handles uh, oh, see there it's filled but by the time I sand it down they should sort of disappear uh, I've got to put some wax on front of these then I'm going to put the final bevel or a rough bevel uh, um, secondary bevel onto these with and then uh, hand sand them again down to 800 grit uh, and then they'll be ready for gluing together but I've still got the knife to glue up, but I thought I'll give it a minute because I wanted to just check my zero on my rifle because I think I knocked it last night. Um, I also want to, I think what I'll probably do is I've got one of these um, death grip bog pods. Um, it's the aluminium one, which is a heavier one, uh, but I think it would have been more useful last night than using my quad sticks. Uh, quad sticks are all right if you're moving about and you can see stuff during the day and you get, get yourself in a bit of, um, well, not having to rush as much. Uh, but when you're stood in one spot, the, uh, this might be a bit more useful. Uh, at least you can just set the rifle up and just leave it. I ain't got like one of those fifth legged um, quad sticks. Well, it wouldn't be a quad stick, would it, if you had a fifth leg? Uh, and I've got my trusty um, Ruger M77223. Uh, I've had this rifle a long time, to be honest, but I do like it. I like the action on a, on a Ruger. It's definitely a lot better than one on my um, Remington. Remington just seems to slap about all over the place, but this one seems to be all right. Uh, target, just see up in the background, somewhere up there. Um, I've got basically a box up there that I've um, made out of railway sleepers and then filled it full of um, horse muck as a, as a bullet catch, and it seems to work. But um, sorted this out now, and now I'm gonna get it away, and I'm just gonna glue that knife up.